Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to continue on with our PlayFab tutorial series. In the last lesson, we showed you how to use server code and cloud scripts to update player statistics. In this lesson, we want to use those player statistics to implement leaderboards. Now, before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. So here I have my PlayFab dashboard, and I've gone to the leaderboard section of my current game. And like I said in the last video, anytime you create a new player statistic, it will also create a leaderboard based on that statistic. And so here I have all the different leaderboards that PlayFabs has automatically created for my game. And I think the leaderboard that we're going to be working on for this tutorial series will be our player high score. And so here you can see we have one entry to our leaderboard and this is the PlayFab account that I've been using for this series. And the high score value that we have set is currently 5,000. Now if we want to, we can click on Edit Leaderboard. And here we have three different options, Statistic Name, Reset Frequency, and Aggregation Method. The statistic name cannot be changed, like I said in the last video. Once you create a statistic, it is permanent. Reset Frequency is a drop-down menu. We have different options. We have Manual, Hourly, Daily, Weekly, and Monthly. And so maybe your game has different seasons and you want your leaderboard to reset every month. Then I would select the Monthly option. Aggregation Method is another drop-down menu and this is a way of filtering your leaderboard. And here they have different options. They have Last, Minimum, Maximum, and Sum. And next to each of these options is a short description telling us what each of them do. For now, I'm just going to leave it at last. We can then click Save Leaderboard, and those options will be implemented into this leaderboard automatically. So now that we have our leaderboard set up, it's time to go to our Unity project. We're then going to open up our PlayFab controller script. Inside this script, we can create a new region for our leaderboard. Inside this region, we want to create a new public function, which we will call get leaderboard. Inside this function, we need to create a new var request. I'll call this request leaderboard. And we'll set it equal to new get leaderboard request. Now there's two required parameters for this request. The first is the starting position, and so we'll type start position. And we'll set this equal to zero. The next required field is the statistic name, and we'll set this equal to player high score. Now if we wanted to, there's a few other parameters that we could set. One of them is max result count which is the number of players or entries we want to have returned to us. The default for this is 10 and the max is 100. So let's just set it to 20. So in other words, we want to display the top 20 players. The next one is profile constraints. And for this, we need to set what the client is allowed to have returned to them in our dashboard. And so I'm going to go to settings and then going to select Client Profile Options. And if we'd like to, we can add any of these profile properties that we would like to have returned to our client. And so one that we could add that wouldn't give away too much private information could be Creation Date. This would return the date this account was created. And so I'm going to click Save Client Profile Options, and then we can go back to our script. And I actually think since we set these options in our dashboard, we don't need to set this parameter. So now let's send this request. So I'm going to type playfab client API dot get leaderboard. We're going to pass in our request leaderboard. And then we need to create some callback functions. So this first one is going to be on get leaderboard. And the parameter that we need to pass in is get leaderboard result. And so I'm going to type get leaderboard result. And we're going to call it result. 
and then I can call this function here. And then we need a callback for an error message. And so this is going to be void on error leaderboard. And the parameter is playfab error. So we can then call this function here. And inside this function, we can just debug dot log error. And then it's going to be error dot generate error report. I probably have like five of these callback functions. Inside our on get leaderboard callback function, we can get access to the display name of every player in our leaderboard. And we can for loop through all those display names and debug them to the console. All right, so here I've created this for each loop, which loops through each player in our leaderboard. And then we debug the player's display name and the player's stat value to the console. Now there is going to be a problem with this for each loop, and that is we've never initialized our player's display name. Now the best place to initialize the player's display name would be when they first register their player. And so here we have our onRegister success function, and I'm going to use the update user title display name request to update their display name. And so here I'm calling the update user title display name function, and I'm sending this request, which is an update user title display name request. I'm passing in the username for the display name. And so whatever they use for the username will also be their display name. Now, if you want to protect the player's username, then it might be a good idea to ask them for a display name that they can then use for this value. I then have a callback function for a successful post, and in this callback function I'm just debugging a message to the console. I then have a callback function for a failed post, and I'm just reusing my on login mobile failure. Like I said, I probably have like five of these functions. Now since I've already registered my player, I can go into my dashboard and manually set my player's display name. And to do this, we want to go to our players tab, we can then select the player that we want to set the display name for. And right here we have display name. And so I'm going to type InfoGamer. I can then scroll down and click Save All Changes. Now I want to make sure that I save this script. And then we can go back to Unity. Inside Unity, I'm going to duplicate our Update Stats button. And I'm going to move it in our scene and I'm going to change the text on it. Now I can select this button, scroll down to our on click. I'm going to use the drop down menu, go to PlayFab Controller, and I'm going to select Git Leaderboard. Now when I click Play, our game automatically logs us in, and if I click Leaderboard, you can see in our console I have InfoGamer 5000. Now let's go back to our dashboard and I'm going to select one of our other players. I'm going to go to statistics and I'm going to add in our player high score statistic. And I'm going to give him a value, maybe just 1000. I'll then click save player statistic. Now when we go back to Unity and play our game, I can click leaderboard 
And there we have our InfoGamer 5000. And then we don't have a display name for the player that we just created. And that's why there's no name there. It's just a null. And then we have 1000. So if I wanted to, I could go back to my dashboard. I could select this player and I could give him a name. I'll just call him Tester. We'll click Save and then we'll rerun our game. Now when I click Leaderboard and I go to the console, you can see we have InfoGamer 5000 and we have Tester 1000. Now of course you're going to want to do a lot more than just debug the player stats to the console. You're going to want to have some sort of visual display that will actually display this information in your game. But that's something that we can do in the next lesson. So that's everything that we're going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.